Sketching in Shaper 3D is very similar to just sketching on a regular piece of paper. So if I wanted to draw a line, for example, I would just draw a line on my screen. Notice here that I've drawn this line in actually a 3D view. So you can see if I navigate around a little bit here, I'm currently in a 3D view, but I've only drawn on my top plane here. So of course it is possible to draw in 3D views. However, I'd suggest as we're first starting out, it's probably best practice to avoid this. And you generally want to draw ortho to a specific view. So in this case, if we want to draw on our top view, I would most likely want to look down ortho to that top view. So to do this again, of course, I can use my view cube to jump to my exact top view. Or just a quick little shortcut is just to do a double tap right on my top view here. And now you can see that I've jumped so I'm looking straight down onto my top view. Again, this just makes it easier and more accurate for my sketching. Just as if I was sketching on a piece of paper, I'd probably have that piece of paper down on a table. I wouldn't be holding it at some strange 3D angle. Let's just grab this line and I can hit delete. And again, now let's just run through a few more sketching commands. So of course, as we saw, I can just draw a line as I would draw any other line. And again, a very handy button that I'll be using quite often is the undo button. So down there in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see undo will undo that line. If I'd like to draw a circle, for example, again, just as you would sketch out the shape of a circle on a piece of paper, I can just try to draw the general shape of a circle, and it should automatically change into a circle. Notice this circle becomes a light blue color, and that's showing me that it's now a fully closed sketch. And this will be, become more important later on as we see, as if we want to create any 3D designs, we're going to want to build these from closed sketches. Again, I'll just undo this circle. In a very similar manner, I can draw an arc. So just like drawing a circle, but just not closing it out all the way. And I'm just holding down my pencil, and I can say exactly how far I'd like that arc to go. And again, maybe I'll just hit undo. Another useful tip is the ability to jump between a simple line and an arc. So I'm going to start by just drawing a line here. And now let's say I actually want to change this into an arc. What I can do is just shake my pencil a little bit here. And now you can see I've changed that line into an arc. And if I want to jump back to a line, I'll just shake my pencil again. And now I'm back to a line. So I can jump back and forth between lines and arcs quite easily, just by a shake of the pencil there. One other important thing to note is that you can actually change the placement of the grid. So we'll see here by default that my grid is actually placed on my top view, such that if I drew a circle, for example, it's coming in on my top view there. What I can do, if I tap my view cube, down at the bottom, I have some place grid on options. And you can see here that currently it's set to my XY plane, which is my top view. But if I tap, for example, the YZ plane, my default grid has now changed. And I can see the grid placement has changed there such that it's now placed on my right view. So if I drew a circle here now, I can see that that one has been placed onto my right view. Very similarly, I'll just tap on my view cube once more, and I can jump to my ZX plane. And now that places the default grid on my front view. And we can see there, if I drew one more circle here, it's going to come in on my front view. So you can see here you have the ability to change where your default grid is coming in based on your specific needs or design. 
Finally, now that we've learned some of the basics on sketching, let's try to put this all together and create a simple closed sketch. So I'm just going to draw a few lines here. And maybe something like this. And then maybe I'll finish it off with an arc as well. And here we can see I very easily and very quickly created a closed sketch. In the next few lessons, we're first going to learn about how to use and create splines. And then we're going to jump back to this simple sketch and learn how to edit as well as finish off and finalize our sketches using constraints and dimensions.